There are many moods in these Olympic Games, painted by images in the changing light and silent sounds of murmurs on the wind. Simple gestures and brief encouragements, precious days that for the young athlete will never come just this way again. Lone shadows in the snowflakes beneath the flame. The eternal figures of skaters involved in the personal hours of practice, and one of them is special, and somehow you can pick her out. You know her. She is the best in the world. Anne Henning of the U.S. The weather really doesn't bother me. Since I've been here in Sapporo, it's been snowing quite when I'm training, and even though you, know, you can't see and you're freezing to death, you just have to keep going. Every day, my training here, it includes uh, many sprint workouts, and I practice my starts. Off the ice, I do a little bit of running and uh, stretching exercises to get my muscles really relaxed. And then on the ice, we train for about an hour in sprinting and long distance workouts together. And then after, we run and do stretching to get our legs loosened up for the next day. Excited spectators at Mackamanai Olympic Stadium were happy in the morning sunshine. Thousands of young people cheering together with chants and shots and songs. The flags exposing kaleidoscopic images of the faces in the crowd. Millions were watching the games on television all over the world, but best of all, they were here. When I got to the starting line, my first run, I was very nervous and I, I didn't know what I was going to skate. I, I just kept telling myself, keep cool and skate your best race. I got down and I was off. Start is one of the most important parts of the 500 meter race and I like to have a, a fast, a generally fast 100 meter time like like I had today at 10.7. 11 seconds flat is a, an average time for the 100 meters for women. And when you have around that time then you could come out pretty well at the end. You have to come into your corners. The first corner, you should come into it. You know, and just keep rolling. Just keep striding out as much as you can, as fast as you can. With her tremendous tempo and leg power, Anne comes through the second turn on the way to a possible world record. Then, one of the rarest incidents in Olympic history. She suddenly stands up to avoid Berker of Canada crossing from the inside lane. The time that I lost, wasn't as great as it could have been, probably, because I stayed right behind her, sort of like in her vacuum for at least two seconds, and I wasn't panicking and scratching around and just getting all lost. I just had to say, get down when you come behind her. Just get down and skate now. And then just come around your last corner and head for the finish line. I do sort of get into a, uh, a rhythm or a, or a stroke, and the only place that you can change it to go faster is going into and coming out of corners where you can, like, whip your corners and you can pick up speed there. But otherwise, you just are in a little groove. It turned out pretty well, but I didn't skate it very well. And so I had to skate it again. Most of the spectators saw the USA time of 43.73 go up on the board. Others who saw the interference happen did not understand the rule. To equalize the distance for each racer, there is a lane change point in the back stretch. Should both racers come to the crossover together, the racer on the outside has the right of way. Hooker did not give way, and Henning stood up to win her cross ahead, losing a second and a half or more. Anne got her tempo back brilliantly, and out of the fourth corner, she was skating very well when suddenly Sylvia Berker fell and was completely out of it then. My last 100 meters, sometimes my legs are just going all over, and I don't even know what's going on. But like today, at my first run, I, I just kept cool and said, just keep stroking the way you usually do. Well, my concentration at the start is uh, very important because that's the start of your race. And if you don't concentrate at the start, really, you could blow your whole race. And you have to listen for the starter. If you don't get right with the gun, you could have a bad 100 meters time, which could lead to a bad all-around time. The first command that the starter gives them is a whistle that tells them that uh, the timers and the judges are ready for the race to begin. And then he says to us, to the start, and we come up to the first line, and we stand there. And then he goes, 
on your mark. And then the two girls move up to the second line. They get down, the skating starts. And they have to be perfectly still for a you know, split second. They have to both be down in the same position, and then he'll shoot the gun. And if one girl is moving when another isn't, or if she goes off the line first, and she has jumped the gun, then he'll call it back. My start, I do practice the holding on the line. When he says, on your mark, I practice staying there for a split second. And then I go. Here in our slow motion study, you can feel Ann Henning's power drive. She skates straighter than most sprinters, but it is most comfortable for her. Her arm tempo seems to be half again as fast as her competitor, but she is not hurrying. Her leg extension is full, giving her the maximum efficiency on each stroke. After the race, Ann Henning was confused and disappointed she hadn't raced better. And she and her coach, Ed Rudolph, asked the judges if Ann could race again in an extra heat. And in the most dramatic performance in the Winter Games to date, Ann Henning skated again, alone against the clock. And in an amazing fashion, beat her first heat time by four tenths of a second, winning her gold medal in the 500 meter sprint in 43.33, a new Olympic record. Here in normal speed, the historic second run, alone against the clock. And as you watch through the 500 meters, you can see Ann Henning's incredible power and drive and deed. She had won her medal in the true Olympic tradition, not in just winning, which she could have done by being satisfied with the first run, which was the best time of the day, but in how she won. And by racing again, she had had the chance and she had succeeded gloriously for herself, her wonderful skating club in Northbrook, Illinois, and for our country. <laughs>